Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Caregiver Dave Celebrity Segment. A segment. Welcome to the program, Caregiver Dave and Sandy. Dave, how are you? And uh, hey. you are just, again, talk London. That experience was amazing, wasn't it? You talked about it so much, but I want to hear the whole experience because these kind of experiences are bucket list memories that you'll never forget. It was, Neil. It was, uh, it was the amazing trip of a lifetime. Uh, it, it was postponed like two or three times because of COVID. And finally, my promoter just says, you know what, we've got to do it because if we don't do it, I fear that uh, Europe's going to close down and we're, we're never going to get over there. And the original plan was for my wife and I to go there and, to, you know, relax and spend uh, two, three weeks, not only in London, but in uh, uh, Italy and Venice and uh, Paris but she was a little freaked out from COVID because, you know, you read the UK website and it just sounds like, oh my God, you know, you got to quarantine for 10 days and you got to take a, a test on day two and another test on day eight. And so um, I, I didn't know if I was going to even make it, but my guys went there ahead of me and says, hey, it's a joke. I mean, no one's even uh doing anything that uh, no one's wearing masks the hotels don't even know that you're uh uh you know under quarantine etc so i i felt safe and i did it, a three-day whirlwind trip i went on a sunday came back on a wednesday and i spoke at the london stock exchange just talking about my faith a different subject because i lost all my money in 2008 you know and i figured it was an appropriate topic for a stock stock exchange exactly. global recession etc stock market crash and uh, i think i'm going to start telling this story uh, more and more because you know this is me this is how i got to who, to where i am uh, it's a little early i'm my brain's still <laughs> okay uh, but so it's well, great but... i want to hear the story so you said we know the caregiving story but we never don't we do not know the story yeah. that you spoke about which is in 2008 so what happened in 2008 that kind of some of your wealth went away and then from the crash tell us about that yeah well i i began my story just uh with a great hook line in the beginning and just but officer what do you mean uh, somebody is actually selling crack cocaine from my address. And I went on to talk about how, you know, 2008 was the subprime mortgage crisis and, and, uh, the bank regulators didn't do their job and they caused the, uh, banks to, uh, sell uh, real estate to, uh, buyers who couldn't afford to pay it back. And that caused, you know, global recession and uh, stock market to crash and real estate prices to collapse. And I talked about my own experience, you know, it affected uh, big and small businesses alike. I was on the verge of bankruptcy. My home was in foreclosure. They were getting ready to do a trustee sale on Christmas Eve, 2009 of all dates. You know, I held up a big stack of credit cards like this. This is what uh, $500,000 worth of unsecured wow. debt looks like when you can't even make the payments. And so on and so on. Creditors were calling me from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, at my business and my home, uh, how I bought an apartment building in Nashville as a flip. But all of a sudden, I realized that my tenants weren't paying the rent and uh, 10 of them were actually selling crack cocaine out of their apartments. I, I, I had to just give the um, uh, I couldn't make the mortgage payments. So I, I gave the apartment back to the bank in lieu of foreclosure, had another building in L.A., that I converted to a coffee shop because my daughter decided she wanted to have a business for her and her husband. And so wasn't that nice of me? <laughs> Everything was fine until she caught him sleeping with a uh, cute little 17 year old barista that worked for them. Well, that ended up in divorce. And, and of course she didn't want the coffee shop anymore. I couldn't uh, sell it or rent it to anybody because we were in the middle of a recession. Oh, geez. Who could afford a $5 latte in those days? So right. Had to give that one back. Uh, lost a total of about $1.5 million in cash equity and uh, defaulted on half a million dollars in unsecured debt. And I had nowhere else to turn except to my faith. And so I was suing the guy who sold me the apartment building because I was de uh, in default. But I had a mentor who says, man, you don't want to do that. That's just three years of negative energy. And I says, what are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I just <laughs> asked, my attorney says we can win. He says, you know what? Uh, he prayed over me. And uh, when I came up from the prayer, I just says, you know what? 
God is my vindicator. He says, I will repay. And so I called my attorney. I says, you know, drop the lawsuit. She goes, what? Are you crazy? I says, no, I, uh, I just don't want to have three years of negative energy and, and just bitterness surrounding me. Uh, I, I have faith. I'm just going to trust that God will take care of him and he'll take care of me. And, you know, Neil, in a period of seven, eight, nine years, he totally reversed it. I, I use the example of the, the book of Job in the Bible, you know, okay. uh, God and Satan were having this conversation in heaven. And God says, have you noticed my servant Job? He, he's a righteous man. He fears God and he shuns evil. And uh, Satan came back sarcastically to God. He says, does Job fear God for nothing? You put a hedge of protection around him. I can't touch him. If you allow me to, uh, you know, torment him, he'll curse you to your face. And God said, do it, only spare his life. And immediately Job, like all of his sheep, his cattle, his uh, field hands, his servants were attacked and killed by marauders. And then all of a sudden a great wind blew the roof off the house of Job's oldest son and everyone that he was entertaining, all his siblings had died. And then Job became uh, from head to toe, uh, painful sores all over his body. And yet in all of this, Job did not sin. In fact, he declared the most uh, amazing thing that was ever recorded in human history. He says, I was naked when I came into this world. I'll be naked when I leave. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be his name. And, you know, God was so pleased with Job's response in his test like that, that he double, uh, he gave him a double portion of everything he had lost gave him a long life. He saw his children, his great-grandchildren, and uh, he gave him seven more sons and daughters to replace the ones he lost. And, you know, in 2008, I felt just like Job. Yes. I had lost all that stuff. And today, I am debt-free. I am making double what I was making before 2008, and I own double my net worth uh, more than I was in 2008. And, I mean, it's a miracle. And there are still a lot of people today who are who are suffering from that uh, terrible time. Right. Why me? I mean, I feel like you know, uh, Lieutenant Dan. Two people go to, so, to Vietnam, yeah. and one comes back in a body bag, and one comes back healthy. And and I don't know why me. All I know is what I did. I trusted. I was positive. I I started the uh, uh, these declarations, you know, uh, that are in scripture you know, of how uh, I am the head and not the tail and so on. It's just a long story of the things that I just did daily, believing yes. that all things work for good to them that serve him. And I've never told that story uh, publicly. I've spoken uh, on 30 stages all across the country, spoken on television uh, 50 times, you know, about the gas station, about my caregiving experience. But I felt like I was going through the stroke, you know, 25 years ago, yes. my wife went through a stroke lost her speech, became paralyzed. But now this was my stroke, my financial stroke. Yeah, and I'm stronger great. and wiser. You know, I say I wouldn't want to repeat it for a million dollars, but I wouldn't want to replace it for a billion because it's made me stronger. It's made me wiser. Uh, I have a confidence that I've never had before. My faith is never stronger. My marriage is never stronger. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So Dave, the kind of saying used faith, but you also had a plan. Because we can use our faith all the time, but we also have to take action with a plan, correct? Absolutely. And I had a plan. I had a daily plan that I was on every single day, prayed, meditated, read the Bible. And uh, that, was, that was how I made it through. What about plans strategically to get out of all of it? Did you have well, yeah, that's, actions? That's how I got out of it. Uh, God gave me wisdom. You know, I have, a, I have a hammock and I'm writing a book about hammock wisdom and whenever I pray and meditate, uh, I can solve the world's problems on my hammock. I'm writing my book now, uh, almost done. But um, part of it was talking to an attorney with the gas station where he figured out a plan, a document to sign. I had a partner who I own the gas station with. Right. We, put, we put it in their name and we had to trust them. They were good Christian people. We had to trust them that in five years, when all of this was over, when the statute of limitations was uh, gone and all that stuff, that they would give it back. So he signed an option agreement where I became a consultant and I earned 1099 income. Can't be attached. Wow. And uh, it, so in exchange for all of that, I had an option to become a half partner again in five years for the sum of $100. 
it worked. <laughs> uh, he saved my house at the time Obama was doing the uh, mortgage uh, uh, modifications. Yes. It took me 18 months to get approved for a, a loan modification. I didn't make a payment in 18 months. All of those payments, which I had hung on to just in case, because you know my wife had gone through a stroke. The last thing I wanted her to do was be evicted uh, out of our home and have to move into this tiny little apartment. I was hoping and praying. Um, I had the money in the bank just in case. And I was using a lot of it, I, but I, I still couldn't afford my payment. But they reduced my payment by 40%. After 18 months, I was able to hang on to the house, was able to put that, that arrears toward the end of the uh, loan and uh, got a 1% mortgage. Uh, what else? Uh, I did debt negotiation with the creditors, <laughs> 15 cents on the dollar. I ended up paying them. Uh, many of them just went away but there were two or three that were going to sue me and they were serious about it. And so I, I threatened bankruptcy. I said, listen, if you sue me, I'm going to go bankrupt and then you'll get nothing. Why don't you work with me? And I, I worked with this debt negotiator and um, he was charging a lot of money. So I said, you know what? I could do this myself. And so I, I would call them one by one and I would negotiate great settlement plans. It took me like two or three years to pay everybody off 15 cents on the dollar but I'm today, I, like I said, I'm debt free and I'm making double what I was making before. And I give the glory to God. And you and I think also you talk about your, your faith every day, positivity, your faith, but also the fact of having an action plan. And you had yeah. that action plan the whole way through, but you've learned lessons through this. Lessons yeah. are not to put yourself in so much debt, right? Oh, so it it will debt never for... happen again. Right. Never, ever, ever uh, get a, uh, a line of credit on your house and use that for investments to flip real estate, this and that, you know, we were in the, in the middle of a real estate boom. Nobody thought it would ever end. I and, mean, gonna, and I should know better. Here. I've seen booms bust before. Right. This, do you think this one's going to be the boom that's bust? I mean, yes, this, yes, I, yes, I, 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 yes, yes. And yes, because we didn't fix anything, Neil in no. 2008, we turned on the printing press and we printed all that money, the tarp money, and we bailed out the banks and we bailed out the real estate. We didn't bail out the little guys like us, you know, except with the mortgage uh, modification, stuff like that. But a lot of people didn't uh, qualify for that. Today, they're doing the same thing. They didn't fix the problem. They just threw fake money at it. And, uh, you know, when you turn on the printing press, you have inflation. And people say, well, where's the inflation? This was like for the last 12, 13 years. Well, inflation was in the real estate and it was in the stock market. That's why real estate and uh, home prices have been doing fantastic because that's called inflation. Yes. Okay. And it's going to pop. And I'm invested in all the right things now. Before I was invested in all the wrong things. What do I own, you ask? Well, I own gold and silver, physical gold and silver, because that paper crap is, is just crap. I owned some cryptos, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, this one called Car Cardano, ADA. And then um, I also own my business, of course. So things that are inflation proof is what I own. I don't trust the banks. I don't, uh, I keep very little money in the banks for a long time. You know, I, I bought a very uh, expensive safe and kept it in there. But then I was worried about the cash. The cash is starting to eat away uh, 15, 20% a year. What kind of investment is that? <laughs> Holding on to investment that each year you lose 20%. So that's why I went into cryptos and I went into it at the right time. Even today, you know, it's up and down and up and down, but I'm, I'm a 50% annual return uh, better. I was a hundred percent, but it just keeps going up and down. The more money we spend, the more money we print, uh, Crypto Bitcoin is, is going to be around for a, a long time. We're seeing inflation. We're just seeing different things. And you're, you're, you're doing, definitely people are choosing get rich quick. And when that happens, you end up, falling flat on your face at one point in time it might yeah. look great now but unless you have something that's inflation proof and recession proof or depression proof we're about to see it so i guess dave you'll be doing lots of tv shows about this very soon once it happens right when's yeah. the next big thing <laughs> It was funny. I was talking to a colleague, yes, a couple of days ago about this pandemic looks like we're finally reaching its tail end, COVID's. But already Bill Gates is talking about the, we're not ready for the next pandemic. So that means that you continue to stay that route. 
where it's recession proof and money that is going to not lose value, but we're going to see a big problem happening soon. So yeah. Definitely. And everybody has their own opinion of the vaccine. You know, is it good? Is it bad? Uh, is COVID real? Is it fake? Uh, I don't even uh, express my opinion anymore because if, if I'm, uh, if I have the vaccine and I'm talking to someone who doesn't, we're going to get into an argument. Yes. And if I don't have the vaccine and they do, we're going to get into an argument. Yeah. So I just say, sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't talk about that. I don't talk about that. That's, that's <laughs> my, it's, it's some of my... your best, some of your best friends will, will leave you, exactly. you. But for the I vaccine. Mean, you know, exactly. friends I've had for years and years and years. And then if they find out something, boy, it's like a light switch. They, uh, Maybe I could do a bunch of TV shows saying how I won't, I won't tell people if I had the vaccine or not. And all I want to say is basically we need to have an oral vaccine and it's in the process, but COVID soon will be over. I give it a year. And you know, I, I was on um, uh, that, uh, what is that? I can't even Clubhouse. think of the name, Clubhouse yesterday. And there was this, there was this room, they were talking about the vaccines and they were playing this Grant Cardone interview where he was interviewing this guy. I don't remember who he was, but uh, he was talking about, and I pinged you in, I don't know if you went, but um, uh, the Nuremberg trials of how Hitler used to experiment on people without their knowledge and stuff. And that laws were actually written that protect us from any government uh, doing experimental drugs on us and this and that. And they're reading the laws. And I just, oh my gosh, you know, they're breaking all these laws. And whether you're for it or against it, there are laws on the books back from exactly. the days of Hitler during the Nuremberg trials that are to prevent all this. Now, whether you're for the vaccine or against the vaccine, that's one thing. But nobody should have to be a guinea pig for any government on uh, drugs or vaccines that are uh, experimental in nature, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, and many of the people who were talking uh, are, uh, says, hey, I want the vaccine. I'm, well, great. And, and other people say, no, I don't want the vaccine. Well, you know, it's your choice. It should always be your choice. The government doesn't own our bodies. Exactly. And so it's something it, to think about. I, I had never thought of that angle before. But I think that the topic that if I would try to do, and I wonder if they would want that, is how COVID vaccine has split families apart, split, split friends apart. It's a great topic. It's like yeah. the North versus the South back in the day. <laughs> you were the Confederates. It's or, the new civil war. It's yes, the new civil war. They I, figured out how great, to divide and conquer us. Yes. That's a great topic. So, see, Dave, this is what I see from you. You know, caregiving's where it started. Caregiver Dave will always say. But now you got to be the motivational speaker, start going on stages as a motivational speaker and speak about specific topics because not everyone can speak. The thing is, you could teach people how to speak. And I don't know if you signed disclosures on that or not, but you know how to public speak. You could speak on all these stages, but you can motivate people in so many ways. And but you should be on stages all over the world. And you are already but getting handsomely paid. So keep working on that and find your go-to speech that's going to motivate people because I think this one that you did in the UK is going to hit it huge because everyone loves the rock bottom story. Caregiving story, yeah, that's great. But this one here, hey, I was able to double my money, change everything in 2008, and we all have gone through these crazy things. And it was great yeah. to have you back on the show. I've got to make a shameless plug before you let me go. Uh, I'm reading an amazing book by uh, one of my mentors, Clint Arthur, Wisdom of the Men. And, and I'm not just saying this because he's my mentor or because he's my friend. Uh, I am truly riveted by this book. I'm reading the, uh, I'm listening to the audio book, Wisdom of the Men. He's basically opened up his entire life being very vulnerable and honest, telling the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what makes him tick and how he got to where he was. Because he was broke, uh, taxi cab driver, you know, trying to become one of Hollywood's uh, success stories. But, you know, unless you are well connected in Hollywood, you're not going anywhere. Uh, I can't put the book down and I recommend it for anybody, uh, especially men who want to learn uh, how to succeed. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're broke or you're in debt up to your nose, as we just discovered from my story, uh, Wisdom of the Men, I highly recommend it. Give it five stars. All right, Dave, we appreciate it, man. Take care and uh, look forward to another big celebrity interview. They're coming. They're coming big time. It's now the season. I love the season between October and Thanksgiving because the biggest celebrities come out of the woodwork 
Yeah, and let's then, do another red carpet. Uh, yeah, exactly. They, I'm waiting. Oh, they're coming. Those kind of no, things they're anymore? coming. And oh, yes, they are. I hope they're coming back. And COVID. And let's hope Bill Gates is wrong in the next pandemic. So okay. take care, Dave. We appreciate it, man. And we'll talk Thanks, very man. soon. All right, guys. That was the Caregiver Bye -bye. Dave Celebrity segment. Take care.